Hey guys, welcome back to the Prehistoric Life Podcast. I'm your host, Eric Crawford, and today, since it is coming to the wintry Christmas time, I thought I would do some dinosaurs from cold places. So our first dinosaur is the Patchy Patchy Packy Rhinosaurus, whichever one you want to say it is. Uh, it is found in the Prince Creek Formation in Alaska. So, Alaska Triceratops, which is pretty interesting. Um, so, as you can see, it's got the... It, it's not like other ceratopsians. It doesn't have a, so, a sword. It doesn't have a horn. It has a giant knob. Like a big old bulging knob on its nose. You can see that its frill comes back a little bit. Let's zoom into that. You can see the little horn there. As you can see, it has the very ceratopsian looking body. Um, it's got ceratopsian tail. It's got the slightly smaller front legs with bigger back legs. Uh, powerful. You can see like kind of a outshoot of the cheek. You can see the beak here. Um, yeah, so pa Patchy Rhinosaurus, Pachy Rhinosaurus. Um, it's actually in more places than just Prince Creek Formation. But, yeah. So, let's get into some measurements. It's about 9.843, feet tall. It's about 2.2 to 4.4 tons. I just realized I put tons long. It's 26.25 feet long. Its diet is, it's a herbivore, so it, it feeds on plants of its time. So ferns, berries, bushes, basically whatever it could find, considering that it lived in like an Alaskan formation and it lived in polar woodlands. Uh, its fossils were found in North America, so Canada, Alberta, the Bear Pan, and Horseshoe Canyon formations, and USA and Alaska in the Prince Creek Formation, like I said. It's a medium herbivore. It's a ceratopsian. It lived in herds of basically all that were around at the time, so not saying that this is a set number, but 4 to 26 maybe. They'd break off possibly. They lived in woodland, polar woodlands, like I said. They used the knob on its head as defense. It was named by Charles Mortram Sternberg in 1950s. Its fossil, uh, what do you call it? Representation, it, uh, skulls of many individual as well as a hundred, or not a hundred, but hundreds of assorted bones. Even though it did not have the elaborate horns of some ceratopsians like Inosaurus or just Triceratops itself, Pachyronosaurus has become a favorite amongst ceratopsian dinosaur enthusiasts because of the large bone uh, growth called a boss that is present on top of its snout. A second smaller bone was also presented over the eyes and is sometimes close to the nasal bo uh, nasal boss. Pachyrhinosaurus still possesses some small horns, particularly particularly around the edges of the frill. Some of these characteristics are shared among amongst the Pachyrhinosaurus species, while some are unique to just one species. So this giant knob on its nose is called a nasal boss, and it's thought to have or sometimes they have what they call, or what I'm going to call for lack of a better term, eye boss. Wait a minute. Eye bosses. So it's uh, like a triceratops. If we're looking at this like a triceratops, it's got one giant boss where the nasal cavity is, so right here. And then it would have two smaller ones where basically the other horns are. The... Uh, horns that it would have would be up here on the back of its frill, as you can kind of make out and see. Um, 
The first Pachyrhinus fossils were actually discovered way back in 1880, but they did not get the attention they deserved until the late 1940s, which would result in the establishment of a type of the type of species in 1950. The most significant discovery related to Pachyrhinosaurus, however, was excavated in the Pipestone Creek bone bed in the late 80s. Originally discovered by Al Luquist, Luquista. I'm probably butchering that name. So, and he's probably oh, uh, in 1972. He's probably not alive. We can look this up. Al Luquista, Luquista. I can't find I can't find anything fast enough. It's not. It's all right. Um, in eighteen in 1972, which ultimately yielded three and a half thousand Pachyrhinosaurus bones. Jesus, three and a half thousand uh, Pachyrhinosaurus bones, as well as 14, 14 skulls. These bones represented individuals of all ages. From full grown adults to juveniles, suggesting the ceratopsians like Pachyrhinosaurus moved around in herds, possibly as to as a protection against large tyrannosaurid predators like Albertosaurus. One explanation for this bone bed occurring is that Pachyrhinosaurus were crossing a river and may have been swallowed with flood water, resulting in the treacherous conditions that claim the lives of many of the herd. Similar bone beds are also known for other ceratopsian dinosaurs like Centrosaurus and Styracosaurus. Specimens from this bone bed display a mix of convex curved outwards and concave uh, curved inward bosses. So what they're talking about is the nasal bump the big old nasal bump. They have found multiple versions where some it comes together and it bends in a little bit, and then others where it bends out. If that makes sense to anybody, I hope it does because I don't really know how else to describe that. While spectacular, uh, while speculations for this has been cited as. Representing male and female specimens, difference may have been caused by erosion of the material. Individuals from this bone bed were named Pachyrhinosaurus laquistia after Al Laquista. I'm probably butchering his name, and I'm I'm so sorry. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, for anybody who's wondering... This is just what my what my source is. It's prehistoric wildlife. Please go check them out. Um, it, it's basically what I use. So, and as you can see, his name is Al Luquesta. I'll highlight it down there for y'all. Zoom in. So yeah, and then there's this chart here. Since there's three different, so, although I think this should say genus, not species, because I'm pretty sure the species is Pachyrhinosaurus. No, there's just three species of Pachyrhinosaurus. Huh. So, distinct feature of Canadinus, Laquistus, and Puratorum. The eye and snout bones almost together, so... I'll just say C, L, and P. C is yes, L is no, P is yes. Two curved backwards pointed horns on frill. Uh, C is yes, the, uh, L is sometimes, and P is no. So this is how they are determining. Jagged comb exteriors on tip of nasal boss. C is no, L is yes, P is yes. Narrow dome in 
uh, center of upper portion of nasal boss. C is no, L is no, P is yes. Pummel on front of nasal boss. C is no, L is yes, P is no. Two flattened horns that point forwards and down from top of frill. C is yes, L is no, P is no. Flat and rounded nasal boss. C is yes, L is no, P is no. Yeah, there we go. Comb-like horn rising from middle of frill behind the eyes. C is no, L is yes, P is no. No information for these specimens. So these are where they were found. So the Canadison was found in the Horseshoe Canyon. Canyon, not canon. Laquisto, Lasquistia, the Bear Paw Horseshoe Canyon, and the Puratorum is in the Prince Creek Formation. So I, as those who follow me on Instagram probably know, I did go to Alaska. I didn't go to any of these considering how far north they are. I was at like the bottom of Alaska in the Anchorage area. But there was a little museum down there that I did post stuff about. So please go check that out. And they had a, I want to say, Pachyrhinosaurus skull just in the in the front in a giant case. And that probably came from the Prince Creek Formation, considering that it was in Alaska, so it would be easier to ship between states and not technically between countries but there could be a multitude of different possibilities the person who owned it could have very well went out somewhere in like canada and got it they could have bought it off somebody they could have found it themselves in canada and shipped it back to their place in America. There are so many different possibilities of what it could have been on how they got that. No, it is not a Pachyrhinus skull. So, remove that for right now. Um, that's not what I want to do. It was not a Pachyrhinus skull. It was this thing. I will have to figure out what this is, but I do not. I can't read that. That's not Pachyrhinus, though, because Pachyrhinus doesn't have horns. It's probably some kind of other T-Rex, or not T-Rex. Not T-Rex, but um, Ceratopsian that's lived in Alaska. Not that I would think that there'd be a lot, but yeah, it's just another Ceratopsian in Alaska. So Pachyrhinosaurus probably moved over or it was a um, Ceratopsian from... Europe, Asia area that moved over. As you can see, it's got the big old bump on its nose. And some of them have that horn behind their head. Uh, so this one is actually a Laquistu, Laquistia, because it has that horn, which is very interesting that you can. And I'm using that chart on prehistoric wildlife for anybody who's wondering. Uh, and since it has that horn on the back of its head, it's a Laquistia. So this is what some scientists think Pachyrhinosaurus sounded like. So I'm going to just dive right into that. Record.
recordings just got better. Oh, come on. Hey, it's Dana from StreamYard. I'm well, ain't so that ironic? To it's a StreamYard that... ad, but I'd rather listen to Pachyrhinosaurus. Oh, Kind of sounds like what I thought a Ceratops would sound like. I mean, I wasn't expecting much of a noise or vocal difference from this and like Triceratops. So it kind of sounds like what I thought it, it would well sound like. Um, it kind of sounds like someone snoring, though. Not going to lie. So... I'm going to keep playing this. Um... Really does sound like a mixture of... How can I describe this? Someone snoring in thunder itself. Which is a really interesting combination but I like it. Well, I guess that's the end of it with their goofy outro. So that's what Pachyrhinosaurus. What am I saying? That's what Pachyrhinosaurus sounds like. A mixture of thunder and snoring, which is quite the combo. Bear with, with me on this. Here's a prehistoric map of Alaska. So it it looks like modern Alaska, um, but it's basically where all the dinosaurs and things, and prehistoric animals in Alaska were. If you look up here. You'll see Pachyrhinosaurus. I'll kind of zoom in right there. Up north with Nanquiosaurus, which will be the dinosaur for Friday. Um, so Prince Creek is right about here, for those of you who are, well, wondering. So it's right there. There's Pachyrhinosaurus. It's very far north. Um, Canada's over here somewhere, so it probably was like, whoosh, and like all of this air. But there it is up there. So the Prince Creek Formation is up here somewhere. It's really far north, so that's where it was most prevalently found in Alaska. So that's where they marked it on here. But there's our friend. The Pachyrhinosaurus. I'll put. I'll try to put a light on him. That's probably not helping. But there he is.
But yeah. So that's Pachyronosaurus. Um that is Pachyronosaurus. So I, I personally like it. This goofy boss knob head, whatever you want to call it. Um I, I personally like Pachyronosaurus. I think Pachyronosaurus is cool. Uh, it's one of the very few ceratopsians with out, what you call it, horns. So it's a very unique dinosaur. Also, the fact that it was found in Alaska and like really far north in Alaska is pretty darn cool too. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I'm your host, Eric Crawford. Remember to go check out the website from here. You can get to the YouTube and the Instagram. Uh, as you can see, last time we had an interview with Rex Creek Discoveries. As y'all might have noticed on, uh, what's it called, Spotify, there was a little problem with it. Um, I couldn't get the video to work. So the only video footage of that interview is on YouTube. So... Go check out the YouTube. Um, yeah. Go check out the YouTube channel. Because that's where the only video footage of that is. So if you really want to see that video footage, you have to go to the YouTube. Because I don't have it on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. I couldn't get it to load. The thing that I use, Anchor, just wouldn't let it load, which is a little annoying, but what are you going to do about it? Um, while you're there, remember to also click on those buttons and check out the Instagram page. That's where you get all your Dinosaur of the Week knowledge. That's where you get all the special reels. Um, that's where I post most of the news. Uh, about interviews, upcoming projects, dinosaurs of the week, things like that. Um, so go check that out. Go give that a follow. And while you're there, like I was talking about, go check out the prehistoric life. I was to say dinosaur page, but I guess that doesn't really make sense. Prehistoric life YouTube page. As you can see, the only video footage of the Rex Creek discovery is on here. Um, that is primarily because, uh, I couldn't get to load everywhere else. So this is the only place that it's there. And as you can see, we have the interview with fossils and dinosaur dinos interview with fossil shack, the unboxing, uh, my stegosaurus interview with the dinomancer, uh, the hell Creek hooligans, dinosaur cowboy, Sergey, the uh, Russian archaeologist, Dromaeosaurus, Rapatosaurus. But, ooh, I'm into that. But, yeah, as you can see, that is the video interview of Rex Creek Discoveries. So, please go check out the YouTube page for that information. Or, for that, because, well, it's the only place where it's at. So, yeah, and... I'm your host, Eric Crawford. This has been Prehistoric Live Podcast. Signing off. Remember, keep it prehistoric. Goodbye.